Hi, good evening, guys. Uh, today I have with me Dr. Deepak Gowda, consultant, cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon, uh, to discuss on vulvar heart disease and cardiac heart surgery. Thank you for joining us, doctor. Thank you, uh, doctor. I will start off with what are vulvar heart disease and how do they impact heart function? So we can uh, consider our heart. Uh, we can compare our heart to a home, and then uh, like chambers can be compared to the rooms and then there are something called as valves which can be compared to the doors. So any disease process which affect these doors of the home, of the chambers, that is the valves, leads to valvular heart disease. Maybe there is a tightening of the opening or there may be leakage in these valves. So this leads to valvular heart diseases. So when these valvular heart diseases occur in a patient, they may be in a combination leads to thickening of the heart valve uh, muscles and then uh, leading to dilatation of the heart. This in turn causes reduction in the heart function. Okay, doctor. Doctor, can you please tell me types of valvular heart disease? So basically there are three types of valvular heart disease. One can be uh, leakage, leakage in the valves. So that is when the blood flows from one chamber to another chamber. The leakage in the valves uh, lets the blood to go back to the same chamber and uh, few con that is called as regurgitation and the second condition is called as a stenosis where the valve gets thickened over time and then uh, will not open properly improper opening of the valve uh, which is called as a stenosis there is another rare condition which is called as an atresia where the valve is not formed uh, by birth also and uh, it is usually a congenital heart disease which is detected at birth Doctor, what causes vulvar heart disease? Are there any risk factors to be aware of it? So, in India, uh, most common cause is rheumatic heart disease. So, wherein uh, uh, throat infection which is caused to a person when he is 5-15 years of age by a bacteria called Streptococcus, uh, which is not treated properly with antibiotic, leads to uh, streptococcal uh, bacteremia, which in turn uh, leads to affection of these valves. So that is the most common cause in a country like ours, India. Uh, there are other causes also like infective endocarditis wherein uh, uh, most commonly seen in IV drug abusers wherein they use these syringes and uh, inject drugs to their veins and they, this causes bacterial infection in the uh, blood which in turn slowly starts to spread to the valves and slowly eats the valves and develops valvular heart disease. There are other conditions also which leads to valvular heart disease like a heart failure, like a chronic hypertension which is not treated properly, like uh, age is another risk factor uh, which causes valvular heart disease. As a person ages, so there is calcium deposition on these valves and then the valve becomes uh, stenotic like improper uh, opening of the valve occurs. And uh, in few conditions like uh, patients who are on pacemakers and defibrillators, also, there will be little rubbing of the valves on these pacemaker leads and uh, this in turn may lead to valvular heart disease. How do lifestyle factors affect uh, to contribute to this uh, valvular heart disease? So there are few lifestyle factors which contribute to valvular heart disease development like uh, prop not proper uh, food habits, uh, increase in the obesity which we see more common in uh, recent times. Smoking is another risk factor which uh, leads to uh, other heart diseases and which in turn leads to valvular heart disease. Improper skin and dental hygiene, that is one thing which we need to be careful of. Uh, improper dental hygiene may lead to tooth infection which can spread to the blood and then lead to valvular heart diseases. So these are the lifestyle changes uh, which leads to valvular heart disease. Okay. Then can you please tell me any common symptoms of this valvular heart disease? So patients uh, with valvular heart disease usually present to us with shortness of breath. So when they do their routine activities, they'll have shortness of breath. Uh, when uh, walking say for a, um, 10 meters or 15 meters, they'll have breathlessness. Uh, they'll have a rapid increase in the heart rate, which is called as palpitations. So they may be swollen legs ankles and uh, there may be fluid accumulation in the abdomen and uh, there may be rapid weight gain uh, which may uh, they may present with. So they may be also presenting with chest pain uh, which is another most common cause for valvular heart disease. Okay.
Doctor, are there any subtle signs that people might overlook? Yes, there are a few sneaky signs uh, which uh, we have to be careful of like dizziness, rapid heart rate and uh, nausea and fatigue and uh, wheezing and cough which is not getting treated with routine medications, swollen uh, foot and uh, ankles which I uh, told so, and uh, chest pain which uh, people neglect so may also be some symptoms of uh, valvular heart disease. Okay. How it is diagnosed? So uh, routinely when patient comes to our clinic, uh, we uh, take their proper history and when we have a doubt of valvular heart disease, we put a stethoscope on their chest and we can hear a murmur. The normal heart sounds are like lump, dump, lump, dump. So when there is a valvular heart disease, they may have something called as a murmur, like lumps, dump, lumps, dump. So we type this murmur based on the heart rate and heartbeat and then uh, we decide which valvular heart disease the person is having. When we have a doubt and uh, with this murmur, then we get few investigations done to confirm our diagnosis. Okay. Dr. What are the types of tests that are done to assess the severity of this heart problem? Yes. The most common test what we do is uh, conventional echocardiography wherein an ultrasound probe is put on the chest and then with the ultrasound waves we see image the heart and then see the heart function valves and whether there is any leakage in the valves, any thickening of the valves or any, uh, any movement restriction in the valves. So this is the most common uh, investigation what we do and uh, when this we are not able to visualize properly especially in obese patients when we are not able to visualize the heart from outside we do something called a transesophageal echo. It is something uh, similar to like an endoscopic procedure where we put in a tube through the mouth and visualize the heart from behind. So this clearly tells us uh, the valvular uh, lesions. Rarely we get a MRI scan done. Uh, uh, just to make sure of any other way, especially in some infective endocarditis, like surrounding structures which we need to visualize, we get um, special investigations done for it. So, what are the treatment options available for it? So, valvular heart disease can be mild, moderate or severe. So, based on their category, whether it is mild or moderate or severe, uh, we go ahead with treating. Especially mild cases, usually we treat them with uh, medications. And, um, and follow up them with every six months or a year annual follow up with echocardiography. In moderate cases which routinely progresses to severe failure, we closely follow up them. We put them on medications and closely follow them uh, to see whether there is any progression to severity, severe illness or not. And when there is a presentation with severe illness, which usually we see in our uh, setup, uh, so that time we need some intervention for the valvular heart disease, maybe surgical intervention which they end up in. Okay, doctor. Doctor, can you please tell me, can it be treated both surgically and non-surgically? Yes. So initially when a person comes with a valvular heart disease, we put them on few medications to control the symptoms and then prevent the progression of the valvular heart disease. So we may put them on some uh, tablets to uh, remove the excess fluid from the body which are called the diuretics. We may put them on some blood thinners to prevent clot formation of, uh, uh, among uh, on this valvular uh, diseased valves so which is more common in the valvular heart disease patients. So there are few drugs which we put them on to improve the heart function and to reduce the load on the heart. So these are the medications. So most severe cases end up in surgical interventions. So surgical interventions also have different types of surgical interventions which we call as a repair or replacement. So repair is a procedure wherein we repair the native valve uh, through uh, different different uh, approach, maybe a midline sternotomy which is more common practice uh, uh, in India. And uh, recent times what we do most of the cases uh, is uh, minimally invasive surgery or a robotic surgery through which we enter and access the heart and uh, we provide the repair or replacement. Uh, replacement is a procedure wherein we remove the diseased valve and put in a new metal or a tissue valve depending on the person's age and priority and their uh, preferences. Okay. And to summarize this, can you please let us know what are the advanced in, advancements in valvular repair? Valvular heart disease uh, treatment options uh, over the past two decades have uh, 
tremendously improved and uh, maybe in the surgical procedure or the approach uh, these are the things which are seen advancements like uh, the pro uh, approach maybe what i told as a minimally invasive where we do a 2 inch cut and then uh, do the entire surgery what we do through the same midline sternotomy so we do a small 2 inch cut in the right side of the chest to access the mitral valve which is one of the valves on the left side of the chest we do another uh, one one and a half inch cut to access the uh, aortic valve so these are called the minimally invasive surgeries which we do routinely so the advantage of these uh, approaches is uh, uh, cosmetically they are very small incisions and uh, the recovery is very fast there is less blood uh, loss and uh, obviously the healing and wound infection part is pretty much uh, less when you compare to the uh, conventional surgeries so another uh, 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 this based on the uh, procedure what we do is recent advances is uh, valve repair techniques is uh, something called as a david procedure which we do for a aortic uh, valve leakage problems so I was fortunate enough to learn this procedure from Dr. Tyrone David himself when I was in Canada under him uh, got trained for this procedure wherein we repair the native valve itself instead of replacing the valve. So there is another procedure called as a Ozaki procedure uh, developed by a Japanese surgeon. So this procedure uh, utilizes the covering of the heart which is called the pericardium. We take the pericardium and create a new valve and replace the diseased aortic valve of the patient and there is a uh, disease in the aortic valve. This is called as a Ozaki procedure which is done in very few centers across the world and uh, us being one of them uh, uh, and uh, that is one procedure which we do routinely here. And uh, recent advancements have also been seen in uh, transcatheter technology where we put in a small uh, catheter through the groin and then go in and replace the aortic valve or a mitral valve depending on the disease process thank you so much doctor for your valuable insights and to book an in-person appointment with our doctor Deepa Goda you can log into sakravadhospital.com or you can download Sakra patient app from play store and you can book appointment from there and keep following us for we'll keep you updated with all the health tips thank you thank you doctor thank you